Okay, so I've taken my text, I've arranged it, I've added some primitives, made an interesting composition. Uh, the next thing we need to do is you need to take your camera and we need to frame this. Um, so what you want to do is if you select your camera, you're looking through your camera, um, review, if you go to view and you toggle on lock camera to view, um, when you navigate, you're actually navigating your, your camera. So you know the next phase is is the art phase and that's the composition where you're placing these on the page so you want to get an interesting angle alright so part one is like where are you placing things so you want to fill the space in an interesting way alright so I'm gonna say yeah there's pretty good so frame your subject that's one um, and then once I have that I'm gonna turn off lock camera to view because my camera is in place it's gonna stay there um, I added my materials and then the next thing I gotta look at is is what's this gonna look like when I render it and that doesn't look great um, so we need to think about our lighting alright so lighting is the is the final phase um, so to add a light it's shift a and you come down to light and you can play with the different lights um, you choose what you want uh, I'm gonna go with a point light for right now so it's a point of light remember once you have a light what you need to do is you can come over to your light settings and you can change the color of the light <clears throat> or the intensity of the light all right and you can move the light so this is like a ball of light so just you know move it where you want and you can adjust kind of this way um, another thing that's going to come into play though is your background setting in your world so you need to have lights um, but you also have to think about things like global illumination so if, if we come back to the picture of your world or the symbol of your world um, by default there is a background and its strength is probably one and that's going to influence the lighting right so if I crank that all the way down to zero that background is not affecting my lighting all right um, so ideally you, you probably want to keep that off or just like super low and you want to use lights to light your shot alright so you can add as many lights as you want and under light settings you know by all means play with these do you want a shadow do you not want a shadow um, so add some lights and then we're gonna look at your camera options alright so we're almost done um, next we're just gonna tweak our render settings and take a look at our camera um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna from the scene collection I'm gonna select on my camera let me go to the top camera once you do that you'll see your camera is now active so things you want to think about um, the type of of lens you can change that um, depth of field is a cool one so if I enable that um, you'll see that it, it kind of focuses on a certain area and to change that if you hit the drop down list you can just say hey focus on an object um, so I selected the, the letter P in that Rams and that's going to kind of focus on there and you can see all your different settings that you can play with in depth of field down at the bottom. Um, so depth of field is one you might want to play with. Speaking of cameras, if you click the little list, there are a bunch of real world cameras in here that you can you can choose from or you can just leave that go. Um, so depth of field is one you might want to play with. Um, the focal length of your lens, the settings are all here. So once you kind of have that looking pretty good, you want to jump up to the picture of the camera up top. It's your render properties. All right. So some things you want to think about ambient occlusion if you can pop that on it's gonna make your um, image a little more interesting and ambient occlusion is just you know while light bounces it's, it's the areas that aren't getting as much light alright so it, it's gonna make things look a little more natural alright so with the corners of an object obviously they're not gonna get as much light or where things contact the ground they're not gonna get as much light so that's when you want to put on and you can play around with the settings okay the sliders um, bloom up to you if you crank bloom on um, you know you can decide if you want things to kind of bloom you know look a little bit like uh, like there's fog or something in the atmosphere um, again up to you depth of field and let that go um, screen space reflections so if you if you click that on basically um, in your material properties if you have something that has a metallic um, setting on it you'll see reflections um, and then there's settings how good or you know you want the reflections to be um, alright so you can play with those to get it how you how you want 
Um, so for instance, let's say I went to my, let me get off my camera here, and let's click on this background object, go to materials. Um, so with my BG, if I put the metallic way up, all right, you can see, look at that, it's got nice little reflection, and you can play with specularity, um, roughness, right? And you can kind of see all these different results. All right, so maybe I like that a little bit better. Maybe I don't like the metallic, that's up to you. Um, this is where it gets fun, making the text, it's kind of monotonous, but laying it out, playing with the lighting, um, setting up your composition, um, you know, that that's where the art side comes into it. So pick a fun quote, um, pick a sports team, arrange how you want, um, but come up with some type of saying, um, some type of text, and you want to arrange it in an interesting composition. You're going to then take this, and you're going to say, render image. And when it's done, you're going to take that image, and you're going to save it. So just save it wherever you want and submit that to Canvas. All right, so that's your text design. If you have any questions, shoot me an email or you can post in the discussion section.